Hi everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on mathematics, and in particular, I'm going to show you how to solve a specific type of differential equation, a second order linear differential equation, through just looking at a related quadratic equation. Okay, now in a previous video, I did an example of this uh, type, but in but this particular presentation is, is a little bit different. So let me share my screen with you and uh, we can work through the problem. Okay, so we're asked to solve the following problem. Now, the uh, derivatives mean, um, uh, uh, sorry, the, dash, the, the, the primes or the dashes means uh, differentiation. Okay, so if y is a function of x, then, you know, y dash is dy dx and y double dash is d squared y dx squared. Now, this equation here is what's known as a differential equation. There is an equal sign and there is some unknown function that satisfies uh, the, the, the equation, okay? So um, the function that we're looking for has a, has a second order derivative such that when you take away a times the first derivative, plus 16 times the function, everything sort of cancels out to give zero, okay? Now, why are differential equations important? Well, I'm glad you asked. Differential equations are amazing. They describe and model lots of physical and biological processes in our world that change over time, okay? Now, how do we solve this problem? Well, it's an amazing method. It's very quick, and it doesn't actually require any calculus, which is a bit bizarre. But let me show it to you. And um, it actually involves a special kind of a quadratic equation called a characteristic equation. So let me show you show you what I mean. So. This special quadratic equation called a characteristic equation for this start equation is um, you can build it or construct it in the following way. Okay, look at all look at each of these derivatives and the y and the number that precedes each of these terms, the coefficient. You basically take those coefficients and you write them as a quadratic in the following way. Okay, you have, a say, a lambda squared, so instead of having y double dash, the two dashes go to a squared, if you like, and you put a new variable down here. The negative 8 comes down, the y prime just goes to lambda to the power 1, and y is just sort of a derivative to the, uh, of the 0 um, uh, order, if you like, and this just becomes a 16. Okay, so... This now is a, is, is a quadratic equation that you would see at high school, okay? Now, this quadratic equation, we're going to do what we would do at school. We're going to solve that quadratic equation. We know how to solve quadratics. We can use the quadratic formula, or we can perhaps do some, um, some factoring and then get the solution that way. So let, let's see what we can do for this problem. All right, so um, we've got a coefficient of 1 there. We want two numbers that multiply to give positive 16 and add together to give negative 8. Well, two numbers are going to be negative 4 and negative 4, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to factor this to obtain, okay? It's actually a perfect square, so you're going to have something like this. You could have a squared here. I'm just going to write it out like this. Okay, so the left-hand side has been factored. Okay, so we know that lambda will equal uh, 4. Okay, 4 and 4. I'm just going to write it out like that to, just as a little flag here. All right. Or, you know, lambda is 4 with multiplicity 2. Okay, so what? We've, we've, our analysis has gone from a differential equation to 
a quadratic equation and then we found some numbers that satisfy the quadratic equation. But what does this mean for the differential equation that we're trying to solve? Well, let's have a look. We note that the solutions to this, or the roots of this quadratic uh, equation, are real and equal. Okay. Now, this plays a big role in constructing the solution to the original problem. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. So the roots to our quadratic equation are real and equal. Now, in that case, when when you have real and equal roots, the general solution to this original problem is of a special form. Okay, hence. Because of this, th these qualities, the solution to our original problem, our original differential equation, star, is of the following form. Okay. Now, in a previous video, we got, you know, we looked at this problem here. We went through the same steps, and we got real and unequal roots. Then we saw, okay, it's just a combination, linear, what's known as a linear combination of exponentials. It's a bit different here. Okay, we still use exponentials, but because our roots are real and equal, we have to insert something into the mix here. So we've still got an exponential, and a is, a is going to be a constant here. But instead of having a b e to the lambda x, okay, we have a b x e to the lambda x. Okay. So this x wasn't here in the pre in in the the previous slide I showed you, and you'd have like lambda one and lambda two, where lambda one and lambda two are not equal. Okay. All right. So for for this particular problem, lambda would be four. So I put a four in there, a four in there, and then I'm finished. Okay. Okay. So let me just write down A and B are constants. All right, so our solution to our original problem is here now. All right. Okay, so let's just run through that one more time. We were given a differential equation with constant coefficients and a zero on the right hand side, this, this homogeneous problem. Our analysis switched from a differential equation to a quadratic equation, a characteristic equation. We got that by looking at the coefficients of the y primes and the y double primes, etc. We then solved that, looked at the nature of the roots or the solution to that quadratic equation. We found out that they were real and equal, and therefore we had a special form. So let me show that to you. All right. So we wrote down our characteristic equation. We factored it. The roots were real and equal, and then the solution was this combination of uh, this exponential and this x times the exponential. Okay. Now, if the roots were real and uh, unequal, here they're real and equal, but we saw it was a linear combo of exponentials. Okay. So this this forms a little bit different. But you might be thinking, where, where does this where does this x come from? Where does this x come from? Well, I'm not going to talk about that too much here. I've, I've talked about that in other videos. But what you can do with this problem is reduce it to like a system of first order problems. Okay. You solve. Um, you can split this negative 8 up into, say, uh, negative 4y prime minus 4y prime, and then make a substitution and, and form two first order problems. Okay, so that, that, that's kind of where this method um, um, can uh, come from, and, and you can get this independently of this method. Okay, but then the nice thing about the method I'm showing you is that it's very quick and it doesn't involve any calculus. Anyway, hope you enjoyed um, this presentation. If you have any comments or any questions, I always love to read your, your comments and, and, and hear what you have to say. So um, you can always post a, a comment in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon. Bye.